Hi and welcome to this video about process address space size. So the question is, what is the size of a process address space? This really depends on the type of process, whether that's a 32-bit or 64-bit process and some other aspect which is perhaps a bit unexpected. So let's see what that looks like. In order to test that, I'm in order to test that, I'm going to use one of the applications we've seen in a previous video. That's the one that's creating a bunch of uh, ellipse. Um, well, at least one of them. It's not really important as long as we have a process that is not dying very uh, quickly. So I have here an application built with x64 as the way we build that by default with just a 2022 and we get a 64-bit executable. So if you run that using the Explorer here or just directly from Visual Studio, we get something that indeed runs as we expect, but of course this is not what we're interested in. So what I want to do is to look at the address space of this process. And one way of doing that is by using a tool from CC Internals called VMMap. So I'm going to run VMMap, it's in my path. And once we run VMMap, the first thing we see is a choice of selecting a process that we'd like to look at. And this in case is going to be this WinApp process that we have running right now. I'm going to click OK. And then VMMap will analyze the memory usage of that particular process, that WinApp process that has a certain process ID. Now the details of VMMap are beyond the scope of this video. In fact, I plan to have a video separately talking about VMMap but we can see the address space here. You can see that there are these gigantic size representing free space in this address space. And so if we look at that in a different way, we can just scroll here to see all the range of uh, addresses used in this process. You can see the last address, if you add the free part, is actually giving us 128 terabytes, which is the default address space size for 64-bit processors on Windows 8.1 and later. Now let's try something different. Let's go ahead and close that and, uh, and look at 32-bit uh, process. Let me recompile that to x86. So we're going to compile that to x86 and this time we have the output in a different directory right here. I'm going to double-click that. So again, it seems to run just fine as before, but now let's go ahead and find we need to just go ahead and uh, select process. So let's find WinApp here. Here goes. That's a different process, of course. It's being analyzed. And if we look at the result, we can see it's very different than the previous case. We can see here that the size is much smaller. In fact, if we go all the way down here, we'll see that the size is in fact two gigabytes. So we have two gigabytes of address space for this process. Now, if you think about it, because we are on a 64-bit system, maybe we can get more than 2 gigabytes of address space. In fact, we can get 4 gigabytes of address space for a 32-bit process on a 64-bit system, which is, of course, the maximum we can get for 32 bits in terms of the way we represent addresses. So how can we do that? How can we make that even, I would say, better? So the way to do that is to add a flag to the PE. Now first, before I show you that, let me take the current executable here and move that into Total PE, one of my uh, tools to view a PE, but of course you can use any other uh, PE viewer that you might feel comfortable with. And you can see here there's a bunch of flags here uh, in various locations, such as these characteristics you see here, and it just says 32-bit machine. Essentially it means this is a 32-bit executable. Okay, fine. So let's take the 64-bit one. Let's go back here and go to the 64-bit one that we compiled previously and, and then drag it here. You can see now we have another flag here called large address aware. This is the flag that allows us to get more than two gigabytes of address space for the process. So how do we get that flag? For x64 build, Visual Studio sets that by default as part of the linker flags when the executable is being linked. For 32-bit, it doesn't do that automatically. So if I go ahead to this particular project on x86, I'm going to set my configuration to x86 in the platform here. It's called here Win32, which is the older name, but still it means the same thing. And I go to linker and then system. You can see here it says enable large addresses. And so the defaults are 
false for 32 bit and true for 64 bits. Let me change that to yes, even for this 32 bit executable, which I'm going to build now. So I'm going to build that again. And we have some bug here in, in WinP. That's uh, probably uh, my bad. I need to fix that bug. Uh, that probably keeps the process uh, handle alive for really no good reason. So that's definitely my bad. I need to figure out why we have this bug. Or maybe BMAP also is holding on to a process handle. So let's just do that again. And now maybe I didn't have that bug. In fact, we need to verify that. But anyway, if I go ahead and load that executable now, and let me do that. Here's the 32 bit one. You notice it says large address aware now, which means that when running this executable, creating a process based of that, we expect to find that now it actually consumes or can consume four gigabyte. That would be the maximum address space there. So let's verify by running VMAP again. So here goes VMAP. It asks me for a process. Let's find WinApp here and we get the analysis. Here goes, here our analysis, here's our analysis. You can see that in fact, the maximum address now goes all the way to all Fs, which means we have four gigabytes of address space that you can use in this particular process. Most of that is currently free, as you can see here, but this is the address space we have to live with. So there you have it. You have two gigabytes for 32 process bit processes on 64 bit system. If their large address aware flag is not set, you get four gigabytes if it is set. And for 64 bit processes, by default, it is set. In fact, you can clear it and then you also get just two gigabytes, which is completely ridiculous for a 64 bit process. And that's why the default in Visual Studio is to enable it to set that flag. And that's why we get 128 terabytes of address space per process for 64 bit. Let me summarize that using some slides. When we have a 64 bit process, things are simple. We have 128 terabytes per process, which means we have a big address space a process can use. Of course, it doesn't mean that the process can use all of that address space, because if you want to use all this address space, you have to have a size of RAM plus page files that's approaching this size, which is not really feasible today, at least not on my machine. And then we have the upper 128 terabytes of address space known as system space. This is where the kernel is. This is where device drivers are. Everything that's related to kernel data structures and the kernel itself are somewhere within this address space. Again, I'm not saying the kernel needs all that memory, but it has a big address space to work with. Notice the user mode address space, of course, is on a per process basis. Every process thinks it has 128 terabytes to work with. System space, on the other hand, is a singleton because obviously there's just a single kernel. You can't have multiple kernels. Now, if you sum these things up, 128 plus 128, you get 256 terabytes. However, the theoretical 64-bit address space is 2 to the 64th power, which is 16 exabyte, which is really a humongous number. If you think about giga, then you have tera, then peta, and then exa. So we're talking about 16 exabyte. And currently, hardware doesn't support that. The processors don't support that. There's a large chunk, which I'm going to call unmapped here, which cannot really be used. In fact, it is much, much bigger than the usable address space at this point. I will say in parenthesis that current uh, processors in, at Intel and AMD actually support uh, more bits. They actually support 57 bits for um, virtual address space. So we have essentially 64 petabytes per process and 64 petabytes for the system. But currently this kind of setting is not being enabled by the Windows kernel. But the kernel in fact is already ready for that. It's just a matter of enabling that which is probably going to happen at some point in the future when these kinds of sizes will become perhaps a bit more realistic. So what happens in the 32-bit case? We have the case where we don't have the large address to rare flag set, we get two gigabytes of address space, which is exactly what we get on a 32-bit system, if you have that kind of system. I'm not talking about 32-bit systems because they are going away and uh, are not really common these days. In fact, Windows 11 doesn't have a 32-bit uh, variant at all because many of its security features require a 64-bit processor. And so we have the same kernel, of course, this is not changing here. We're talking about the same operating system, the same 64-bit OS. 
and we have the unmapped part, which of course cannot be used, but then there's also an unusable part from the 2 gigabyte range there up to the unmapped area that cannot be used by a 32-bit process that doesn't have this flag. If the process, sorry, the executable does have this flag, then it gets 4 gigabytes uh, to work with at most, which is of course the maximum a 32-bit process can use, that's the limit for 32-bit addresses, and we of course have the unmapped and unusable pieces. And you might be wondering why is that flag necessary? Why just not give such a process 4 gigabytes and that's it? Why do we require this flag? Why does Windows require this particular flag to enable 4 gigabytes of address space? And by the way, on a 32-bit system, that kind of process could get up to 3 gigabytes of address space if the system was configured to boot in such a way. And so the answer is, or the reason this flag is necessary, is really to guard against crazy developers. Because a crazy developer can say something like this. Since I'm expecting 2 gigabytes as the maximum address range, it means that bit 31 of the address is always zero, it's guaranteed to be zero, so maybe I can use that for some flag. And then anytime I need to access memory, I'm going to mask out this bit and then make the access. And so when that flag exists in the PE, it means I'm not a crazy developer. Whoever wrote that executable is not a crazy developer. And it, the developer promises not to make any kind of assumptions about the most significant bit, bit 31. That's essentially all there is to it. And that's why when we look at 32-bit processes, you'll find that those that have this flag get 4 gigabytes. Otherwise, they only get 2 gigabytes of address space.